In October of 1988, uh, LaRouche received permission to uh, travel to, Ger to West Germany. The Berlin Wall had not yet come down. That would occur a little over a year later. But LaRouche went to Berlin uh, to make yet one final offer to the Soviet Union that uh, would have perhaps even at that late date opened the prospect of uh, the Soviet Union surviving but going through a peaceful transformation. LaRouche gave a press conference at the uh, Kempinski Hotel in West Berlin, uh, literally uh, in the shadow of the Brandenburg Gate, which separated East and West Berlin. Many today will agree that the time has come for early steps toward the reunification of Germany, with the obvious prospect that Berlin might resume its role as the nation's capital. For the United States, as for Germans and Europe generally, the question is, will this reunification process be brought about by assimilating the Federal Republic into the East Bloc's economy or economic range of influence, or can it be accomplished in a different way? In other words, is a united Germany to come into being as a part of Europe from the Atlantic to the Urals, as President de Gaulle proposed, or as Mr. Gorbachev has desired, a Europe from the Urals to the Atlantic. LaRouche, as part of a Food for Peace initiative that he was leading in the fall of 1988, went to Berlin and gave a final offer and a final warning to the Soviet Union that if they were not willing to accept this latest offer of cooperation from the West to help revive the economy of Poland that was collapsing at the time, and to use this as another opportunity to forge lines of cooperation rather than conflict between the Soviet Union and the Warsaw Pact on the one side and the US and Europe and NATO on the other, then this would merely accelerate the collapse of the Soviet Union. Applying this lesson, despite all attempts at structural reform, and despite any amount of credit supplied by the foolish West, the Soviet bloc economy as a whole has reached the critical point. At its present time, in its present form, it will continue to slide downhill from here on, even if the present worldwide food crisis had not come into being. Only days after his final warning to the Soviet Union, LaRouche and several of his associates were indicted in Alexandria, Virginia, on fraudulent charges. Several months earlier, a jury was called in Boston, but they were dismissed after a mistrial. That jury later reported at a press conference that they could find no evidence to convict LaRouche, only evidence that the government intended to frame him. LaRouche and his associates were indicted again and called to trial at the U.S. District Court in Alexandria, Virginia, known as the Rocket Docket, for its speedy convictions and forced guilty pleas. Key evidence was barred from the trial under special orders from Richard Nixon's specially appointed federal judge, Albert V. Bryan, Jr. And in just two months, from indictment to trial to conviction, LaRouche was railroaded into prison. On December 16, 1988, Lyndon LaRouche was sentenced to 15 years in prison, with several of his associates facing similar and worse sentencing. As LaRouche and his associates watched from prison, the Cold War era came to an end with the Soviet economy's collapse, just as he had forecast in 1983. The leaders of the world were now presented with a choice as to what new paradigm would shape the destiny of their nations. Unfortunately, the world did not return to the optimism of John F. Kennedy. 
the new Bush administration rejected LaRouche's strategic defense initiative. The British government moved to stifle the development of a reunified Germany through assassination and coercion. And the former Soviet bloc was asset stripped to feed the failing economies in the West and usher in the era of globalization. A great moment had found a little people. Therefore, the issue is the nature of man, the nature of the human individual. Is the human individual an animal who simply has dog-like characteristics or cow-like characteristics, certain species characteristics given by a, biology, a biological endowment? Or is mankind the human mind? Is mankind the creative being that Zeus hated? The individual who can create, discover, universal physical principles and apply the knowledge of these principles to change the condition of life of humanity and to conquer man's problems as a whole. Is the individual sacred? Is the individual human being different than a mere animal? <laughs>